there guys, I'm back again. And today, I'm just gonna sit down, grab myself a cup of tea as you can see. Uh, I'm gonna spill the tea, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I just felt like sitting down, chit-chatting with y'all. Um, I was thinking of doing this little mini-series on my channel. Um, I was brainstorming a lot and we need to sit down and talk about this. <laughs> Um, cause I feel like with this mini series, I think I could help out a lot of people. I wish I had the internet. First of all, <laughs> I'm like, I was born in the eighties, raised in the nineties, and we didn't have a computer, let alone internet until I was 12 years old. So it was a long while in 2000. Am I saying that right? Yeah, I think it was 2000. 2001 that we got our first computer. I kid you not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there was no YouTube back in the day and the internet was big, but definitely not as big as today. Uh, I'm just going to warn you guys, this video is going to be long. <laughs> so you might want to pause it and grab your popcorn or whatever you're eating or just grab a little cup of tea with me and just sit down because I feel what I'm going to explain in this video. I feel like you guys could get to know me a little bit better and I really hope that through the comments I can get to know you guys a little bit better as well. Um, because I, like I said, wanted to start a new series and let me just explain what it's about, like really short. The series that I wanted to start was basically um, budgeting tips and what makes me an expert on that? Nothing. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Uh, I'm not claiming to be an expert on anything. You do you, honey. And if you're not interested in this, then just click away and don't watch those videos. It's as simple as that. Um, but grab your tea. It's going to be a long story. Uh, I wanted to tell you guys about a little bit about me and um, about my past, I guess. And that's kind of going to explain why I wanted to do uh, these budgeting videos because I was born in 89 in Yugoslavia and as pretty much most of you know um, Especially if you live in Europe or if you live in let's say a region of old Yugoslavia you'll know that there was a Terrible war in 91 and up until 95 and some countries even longer um, but yeah, in 91, we fled the country and we moved to Holland and over here, we couldn't go back because Yugoslavia was a no flying zone. It was a war zone. And of course, basically, um, how can I say this? How, uh, what's the best word for this? Agencies and whatever, uh, tour buses and, and tourism and whatever was definitely a no go in 91 during the entire region of Yugoslavia. So Yugoslavia fell and where I'm from nowadays, that country is called Croatia. I will immediately say, I do not identify as Croatian. I identify still as Yugoslavian and I was born in Yugoslavia and until my death, I will stay Yugoslavian, okay? If you're from Bosnia, if you're from Serbia, Montenegro, you name it, I feel you're like my brothers and sisters. I, I don't care where you're from, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel we're all the same. You know, I feel automatically connected with you. Um, so basically, it's not what this video is about. <laughs> um, but what I'm trying to say is we moved in 91 to Holland and we fled. So we didn't, we, we had nothing. <laughs> Our entire lives were in Yugoslavia. But the problem with that was Yugoslavia fell apart. All the male members of my family had to go to war. Um, and basically the females were, well, kind of left husbandless, if that makes any sense. And mothers were left sonless, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, basically we came to Holland and of course, when you move to a different country, you have nothing. We had to start from zero. I mean, we didn't have a roof over our heads. We had basically the clothes that you have on. Um, we had nothing, like every single thing was left in Yugoslavia and that's a different story, but let's just keep it at this. My passport magically disappeared. So 
therefore, I couldn't go back anymore. I couldn't travel at all as I didn't have any legal papers. So we were literally stuck in Holland. Now, the thing was, um, in Holland, they had a great organization and the first two weeks as like refugees, we spent in a hotel. Um, and then afterwards, we uh, were transported to, I think we were transported somewhere else as well, but hey, I was almost three years old, so I can't really remember a lot. <laughs> Um, but basically we went to this refugee camp, you can call it, uh, in Groesbeek in Holland, Asylsuchercentrum Groesbeek. That's where we stayed for, don't hit me with a rock because I'm not really sure exact, once again, I was three, okay. Uh, I can't remember exactly how long, but I think for about a year or so, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But we applied for a Dutch passport and eventually um, we got one. It did take a long, like it took years to get that passport. So don't think you just got it like that. I mean, Dutch people do research. A lot of people seem to think like Holland is this golden country of opportunity and in a way it is, but in another way it's completely not. And as a refugee, I understand. As a Dutch person, you won't understand because uh, that's a different video. I could do a different video on that. That's not the point. Anyway, um, so uh, when we got to um, that refugee camp, we stayed there for quite a while. And eventually we got a uh, house that was called a Ria Boning, which basically meant you as a foreigner are put into a neighborhood that is completely Dutch. So you're the only foreigner there. And with that, uh, this kind of a plan that the Dutch government used to have back in the 90s, they definitely don't seem to have that today, but back in the day they used to, and that was a great program, I can tell you that, because basically they put you down in a Dutch neighborhood, like I said, so you're the only foreigners there. That honestly was not as great as it sounds. Um, let me just put it this way, every single thing that could go wrong in that neighborhood, we got blamed for when we had nothing to do with that. Anyway, um, we had to learn Dutch like immediately. My sister and I had to go to school immediately. We had to learn Dutch. My mom had to go to school pretty much immediately to learn the language, um, to get her papers because the diploma that she used to have in Yugoslavia was not accepted in Holland. I'm not really sure why because Yugoslavia was quite far back in the day, so whatever. Um, but she had to get all of her papers, she had to learn the language, which honestly I feel like is kind of logical that you have to learn the language. Um, but my mom thought that this war wouldn't last long, I would get some form of paper so we could, you know, go back to Yugoslavia. She didn't want to leave at all, even though there was war. Our entire family lived there, we did not want to leave. Um, so. The problem was, <laughs> I didn't get the papers and the war went from bad to worse to even worse to massacres to genocide to you name it. Uh, so we couldn't go back. When we got the building, my mother didn't know, clearly you're in a new country, so you don't know what kind of rights you have, what kind of things you're... I guess supposed to get and whatnot, and we didn't really ask that much questions either because we were planning to go back. Like I said, unfortunately, it wasn't able to go back, and you know, my sister and I, we went to school, my mother went to school, you name it, and you know, when, when the months flew by and the months turned into years, and then eventually we got our Dutch passports, and you name it, um, we didn't have a lot growing up because pretty much. My mom didn't know language, she was not able to get a job. For years she wasn't able to get a job, which sucked. Um, we eventually learned through people that work like social workers. We didn't even know that, um, but we eventually learned that my mom could apply for uh, welfare here and that way she would still at least have some money to get by. And my parents uh, got divorced when we moved to Holland and my father moved back to um, nowadays Croatia. Uh, so my mom was on her own with two children 
Eventually she heard that my grandmother was in trouble in uh, Yugoslavia and basically she told my grandmother, please get to Holland, here's where you're safe, stay here. My grandmother refused because she had two sons back in Yugoslavia that both had to go to war and you never know if he's going to come back alive and if he's even going to come back, you, you don't, just don't know. But the situation was kind of getting out of hand. Um, so my grandmother applied over here as well. She didn't get a passport, but basically half of the year she was here and then half of the year she was in Yugoslavia, nowadays Croatia. So um, why am I explaining this to y'all? I know it's like a long story. We're like 10 minutes in. This is going to be a long video once again. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because of the fact that we're foreigners. We didn't know the language. Like I said, it was, we had an extremely hard time and money was very scarce and the house that we have a lot of people seem to think that we just got it no you do get it to the sense of where you are placed in that house but you're gonna have to pay like monthly rent just like any other normal dutch person as you know we were foreigners so don't think that you get stuff for free that's not the way it goes you have to pay rent the problem was my mother wasn't able to get a job anywhere. She tried and tried and tried, but because of the huge accent that she had, nobody was willing to take her on. And um, so we struggled a lot. <laughs> Growing up, we did not have a lot at all. As a matter of fact, there have been times where we didn't know if we were going to even make rent and we didn't know if we were going to have a roof over our heads the next month or if they were going to kick us out. We didn't know how to pay a lot of energy bills and uh, water and you name it because there was no money. We often didn't have anything to eat in um, the fridge or whatever. We did have spices. You know, my mom used to say, oh, come on, we always had food. Yes, we had spices, but I can't really make a meal out of spices now can I I remember one time um, that was when I was in high school already and my mom did have a job back then um, but it wasn't anything big you know and uh, I had a friend over at my place and my place my mom's place and especially in Croatia where when you have people over you give them food like food is everything in our country and um, I didn't have anything to give her I was freaking hungry myself because I didn't have anything to eat so I went to look into um, the spice cabinet I guess you could say and I went in and looked in the cabinet to see what we, were, we had and we had um, what's it called in um, English. Oh my goodness, I can't find the word. It's apple mousse in, in Dutch. It's apple mousse. Does that make any sense? Apple sauce? What do you guys call it? Basically pureed apple sauce. I think it's apple sauce. I'm not really sure in English or in American, I should say, what the word is, but I think you know what I mean. Um, basically for the Dutch people watching, apple mousse. And we had crackers. And I smeared that over crackers and I remember that friend literally just did this and she was like that's not food that that's not no you can't eat that and I looked at her and I was so embarrassed because that was the food that I had I didn't have anything else you know to give to her and I was really hungry and I ate that and it tasted fine. You know, my mom always used to say, when you're hungry, everything tastes good. And she's right. When you're really hungry, like when you're hungry and somebody says, eat Brussels sprouts, and you're like, no, that's not what, well, you're not hungry enough then, trust me. When you're hungry, you'll eat everything. And that really is the truth. And I ate those crackers with like that applesauce thing over it, and they tasted so freaking good because <laughs> I was so hungry and um, she was just looking at me like I'm not gonna eat that and I felt on one hand embarrassed but on the other hand I was like dude we don't have the money we don't have peanut butter and your fancy schmancy bread and your Nutella's and that was something that we have maybe once in a year like that was spending you know that that was not money that my mom had to be able to provide for us. It's not like she couldn't provide. I mean, she 
Dear Lord, that woman is an angel. She worked her ass off to be able to provide for us. But the thing is, we just didn't have fancy stuff. We were on a very tight budget. The house alone, the rent was ridiculously high and let alone water, electricity, uh, you name it. So, uh, yeah, I remember, just, I don't know, I just remember that very uh, vividly, <clears throat> excuse me, and I remember her face and her just being like, I'm not gonna eat that, like, I'm sorry, but no, that's like beneath me. And I don't know, I just felt so freaking bad and like embarrassed and, but to me, at least it was food, you know, it was good. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, we were just on a really tight, tight budget. And when it came to clothing, especially for me, it was a disaster. Um, I don't know if you watched one of my first videos, which is about a gastric bypass. Excuse me, let me take a sip because it's kind of cold and I want to drink it. But um, what was I saying? Yeah, the video about the gastric bypass. Um, I, I'm not really sure if I mentioned that in that video, but growing up, I had a hormonal problem. We never knew about that. Uh, my entire family didn't. And it's not in the family as well. So that was just bad luck. This is literally what my doctor said. You just, you just have bad luck. That's all. I don't have a condition. I'm not sick. I don't have to, I don't know, drink some kind of medicine. It was just bad luck. But I was really fat as a kid. And I mean, like walrus fat even though often we didn't have food in in the closet yes it's ridiculous but I was packed and um, shopping for clothing was a disaster the thing was my mother like I said we had serious um, financial problems and honestly my mom didn't have a lot of money to go by and I used to wear the same pants for an entire week at school and I would get bullied for that. People would notice clearly and they would bully me and say, oh my God, don't you have like other pants? They, they thought it was ridiculous, but I literally didn't have other pants. I was like, no, I don't have other pants. And then since I was very um, fat, my thighs, you know, uh, did not have a gap. Oh boy, did they not have a gap. And the problem was every single like jeans or pants or whatever I used to have would get rips where your um, thigh gap is supposed to be because your legs are doing this and then it rips and it did not rip at the seam. No, it ripped that way like through like horizontally instead of vertically. So it was a bitch because if that ripped, I could sew it together, but it will rip pretty much the same day again. And you won't believe how many times I've sewn and sewn and sewn those pants back together because I didn't have other pants. I didn't even have to ask my mother for other pants because there was no money. On top of that, I was a big girl and pants in my size were easily 50 bucks and my mom did not have 50 bucks. Uh, especially not to splurge on pants. Like, I'm sorry, we gotta pay rent. There, there is no way, so sew your pants. Um, so eventually what I ended up doing was taking fabric of other clothing that was basically a pile of just throwing it away and like sewing on patches. But eventually that will rip as well and it didn't look all that good. I mean, let's be honest. But you know what? I, as on one hand, I, I was embarrassed, but on the other hand, it was normal to me to wear that, you know? Uh, the same goes for shoes. I was wearing shoes, I kid you not, where the side of the shoe, I'm not talking about the sole, like literally the side of the shoe was completely ripped. Like my sock and my feet were like sticking out of there. But my mom didn't have money for sneakers. Once again, I didn't even bother to ask because I already know what the answer was gonna be. We have to pay rent, I'm sorry, but when I have more money, we'll spend on it. You know, my mom was, she was trying to make the best out of it that she could. And she, I still look back at our childhood knowing we were ridiculously poor, but it was a good childhood. We learned a lot through being poor. I know that sounds stupid to a lot of people, but 
You know, you become creative. My mom had to jiggle money and make that money last longer and be able to pay the bills and take care of two children in a country where at first she didn't even know the language. Um, she didn't know what rules applied uh, to this day. She doesn't know a lot um, when it comes to certain rules and such. She has learned throughout the years, of course. But basically, you have to realize this is a woman back then when we came in Holland, she was 32. So she was almost my age. Um, and yeah, two sing like a single mother, two children, and eventually her mother as well. My grandmother came here as well. So, you know, she had to do that all by herself. It wasn't easy for her at all. And God bless the way she did it because she did an amazing job. But, you know, still. It wasn't easy and she had like kind of stretched the budget and like I said I remember walking in school with those shoes when it was raining it was the worst because my feet were soaking wet and cold because Holland is cold like the Netherlands are really really cold and really really rainy so every single day I would have wet socks cold feet you name it, and it wasn't, my mother literally worked her ass off. She didn't even notice I was wearing those shoes for months. I would get teased in school for being so poor. And, um, you know, those were children that their parents were living a great life. They had brand name stuff and, you know, like Nike shoes, like, oh my God, that would be like Christmas for like 10 years if we had Nike shoes. Like, hell no, <laughs> there was no money for that. You would, you would never get a brand, even with food. There were no brands at all. It was like the cheapest option and that is that. Um, so I would get teased a lot. I mean, a lot in school. And my grandmother once grabbed my shoes because she noticed that they were um, ripped. And she literally had to sit down with my mother and show her my shoes. And she was like, enough is enough. Like your daughter needs better shoes. She cannot go to school like this. And that's basically when my, something clicked in my mom and she was like, oh my God, you know, I can't believe she's wearing this for months and months and months. She doesn't even have shoes. And once I came home and all of a sudden we went shoe shopping. I was like, is it Christmas? <laughs> Cause trust me, there was no money there. Um, so that was amazing. But like I said, like the reason why I'm explaining this and I know this video is 25 minutes long, so it's long, um, I'm sorry. Uh, but the thing is, the reason why I'm explaining this to you guys and wanted to share where I come from is I know, oh God, I know damn well what it's like to live very, very poor. The fear, the stress, the jiggling money and jiggling bills. Sometimes we have to jiggle bills. Like this bill would not get paid this month in order to pay a different bill. So next month we have to pay double you name it. I mean, we've been there, okay? I know what it's like to live without money. And I wanted to make a series about budgeting. And like I said, I have, this is only from my experience, what I have learned throughout the years of living poorly, thank God I have to knock on wood. And what is wood? There's nothing wood here. Um, but basically, knock on wood, I am very thankful that we're not in that position uh, anymore. I'm not saying I'm, oh dear Lord, I'm so far away from being rich, but the situation isn't that bad anymore. Uh, and that definitely comes through trial and error, of course. And we've learned as children, my sister and I, we were very small, but we already learned how to jiggle money from a very young age. My mom taught us, she never, um, didn't talk about certain things even as small as I, I was really small like five six years old she would already sit me down and explain to me like look this is you know bills that we need to pay sometimes we don't have money but food and um clothing that's all luxury we have to take care of the bills first and then food is the second option and then clothing and stuff and sometimes we just don't have you know she would explain everything through like complete detail with me a kid a five-year-old kid and I already knew what was going on and I understood you know kids are not stupid they understand and um what I'm saying is I think it would be helpful because there are so many people in Holland alone and Holland is not a poor country trust me but boy are there poor people um and in Holland like I said, in Holland alone. And this just 
doesn't apply just to Holland, of course, all throughout the world. I'm just saying where I'm from. Um, I just know that there are a lot of people out there that could use some help with their finances, that want to jiggle it some way or another and just can't seem to find it, or just would like some tips on how to uh, save up money, you name it. Like I said, I wish there was such a thing as YouTube back in the day that we could have have this kind of a help. This is amazing that YouTube is here and I figure it's not necessarily beauty related. I know my channel is a lot of beauty related stuff, but I don't want to be the channel that only does beauty. I like to do a lot of stuff. I like to travel and uh, history and wars and that sounds stupid. I don't mean I like wars. Hopefully you understand what I mean. I'm just interested in basically history, what's been going on. Um, and so budgeting is, I feel like something that is, I don't want to say on trend because that sounds really stupid, but I do know that a lot of people are struggling with it. And I personally do feel like I could help you if you want help with that, of course, or if you're just, like I said, looking for tips to save money. Uh, and I have made actually complete lists and videos. Uh, that's basically what I want to do in the future, dedicate videos to this. So that's the reason why I wanted to talk to y'all. I will do so uh, budgeting tips. Uh, I'm, I don't have necessarily uh, an, an, an upload schedule for that or whatever. You'll just see the video pop off. If you don't like that stuff, click it away. Don't look at that video. If you do, hopefully, I really hope it will be helpful. And on top of that, feel free to share your own saving tips um, like underneath like in the comment section underneath those videos because I feel as a community we can help each other and we can all get through this you know you're not the only one struggling oh dear lord like I said I know what it's like and um I just feel we could all help each other instead of killing each other off on the internet it's getting ridiculous let's be a community and let's help each other and I feel like I really help you guys with that uh, that being said, I will divide it in certain things. So I already have like a couple of videos set up that I want to do, like budgeting for groceries. That's going to be like a separate video. Then clothing is going to be like a separate video. You know what I mean? So um, that's basically how I want to do this. I hope you guys will like it. I'm not really sure. Uh, I hope you guys learned a little bit something about me through this story. I know this has been 30 minutes. Oh my God very long video but i personally feel like this was kind of necessary uh so that you guys understand where my budgeting tips come from that this is not something i like you know kind of sucked out of my thumb or whatever uh this is something that i went through and this is what helped us maybe it will help you again i'm not a doctor i'm not a professor i'm not an expert i'm just talking from experience so i'd like to thank y'all so much for watching i'm so freaking sorry this video was so long i just feel it's kind of necessary um let me know in the comment section down below would you like this type of video and it's fine if you say no i really want to interact with you guys more and i want to know um what you guys want to see from me uh there was one girl who commented on one of my videos that she wanted to see a morning routine. I filmed that morning routine for you. I just need to edit it and it will be online. So that is done. Please let me know in the comment section down below what other videos would you like to see from me? They don't have to be beauty related. Just let me know. I also know a lot of people wanted to uh, have a video in like the country where I'm from. So Croatia nowadays, but Ser Serbian slash Croatian, basically the same language. Um, but they claim it's not, whatever. Uh, but I do know a lot of people want to see a video where I talk in Croatian. So I don't, I, I want to do that video, but I feel like a lot of people, I'm like restraining myself because a lot of people won't be able to follow that video and won't be able to know what I'm talking about. Uh, but still open for ideas. So let me know in the comment section down below what other uh, videos would you like to see from me? What do you think about this whole budgeting idea? Did you like me to talk a little bit about my past and to tell you where I'm from. Did it help you get to know me a little bit better? I hope so. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much. If you made this through the end of the video, wow, you deserve a medal. Like you are a veteran. You're a warrior. I mean this, wow. <laughs> if you made it through the end of the video, wow. 
Oh, you know what? If you made it through the end of the video, let me know by writing down hashtag T. I really want to see who made it through the end of the video. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys probably in the next budgeting tips video. <laughs> Bye.